Welcome to Excalibur Systems introduction to Arink 825. Arink 825, or as we call it, CAN 825, is the Controller Area Network or CAN bus standard for airborne systems. CAN was originally developed to allow digital devices on cars to talk to each other. Because of its low cost and stable operation, it came into wide use in many other fields such as avionics. In 2010, Arink 825.1 was released to define how CAN bus should be used in an avionics environment. Most recently, Arink 825.3 has been released with further refinements to the specification. At its highest speed, 1 MHz, an entire CAN bus should not exceed 40 meters, so it will generally be used for very local areas, such as the tip of a wing. To get the data from there to the cockpit may involve a gateway that acts as a node on the CAN bus, gathers the data, and then transmits it on a different bus, such as an AFDX system. This takes advantage of the CAN bus low cost per node and the AFDX bus high speed long distance capability. It is also possible for a single device to be connected to two different CAN buses and transfer data between them. The CAN bus uses a differential signal similar to RS-422 which is resistant to noise interference. Each CAN 825 message has a 29-bit identifier used to identify which node should read the data and how it should be interpreted. The hardware attaches and reads a CRC on each message to ensure data integrity. A CAN message contains a startup frame and an end of frame field to enable the devices to identify the beginning and end of a packet. An acknowledge bit lets a transmitter know if any devices on the bus are listening. The user only needs three fields from the, the message. The identifier is used to determine if the message is intended for this user and how to interpret the data if it is. The control byte tells the user how many bytes of data are associated with the message. This may be any number from 0 to 8. And the data itself is the final field. The automotive CAN spec allows 11 or 29-bit identifiers, but CAN 825 mandates a 29-bit identifier. Avionics devices developed before Arink 825 may transmit 11-bit identifiers, and new devices will generally be able to read the data from those devices. A significant portion of the Arink 825 specification relates to how to interpret the 29-bit identifier. The automotive CAN spec gives no guidance to this area. The LCC, or Logical Communications Channel, which are the most significant three bits of the identifier, are used to select a message type such as normal messages high priority exceptions, and so on. The lower number of the channel, the higher the priority. The source function ID field identifies the type of device transmitting the data. The data object code, or DOC field, identifies the nature of the data, for example, latitude and longitude. The redundancy channel identifier, or RCI field, is used for our redundant operation. The same data may be sent on multiple parallel CAN buses. 
The RTI field shows which data came from which bus. The data may include multiple types of data. For example, there may be 4 bytes of latitude and 4 bytes of longitude. The specification defines a variety of possible data types, including a private type which is used for custom data. The specification is geared towards the metric system, though certain large aircraft manufacturers prefer to use imperial units, that is uh, feet, pounds, gallons, and so on. Not all message contains engineering data. For example, a health message is typically sent by each node once per second, indicating the number of errors that node has detected over the last second. This enables the detection of poorly operating nodes. All health messages contain the same top 12 bits in the identifier. The lower bits are used to identify which node is transmitting the health message. The data in the health message is defined somewhat differently in the different versions of the ARINC 825 specification. This slide shows the contents according to ARINC 825.2. The TEC and REC values are defined by the automotive CAN bus and are maintained by the hardware CAN controller. After several transmit errors, the node shuts itself down and may be restarted by the device. The number of resets shows how many times this happened. The RX and TX errors are a rolling count of the total number of receive and transmit errors detected by the device. In addition to the health message, a number of other special message types are defined by ARINC 825. These simplify file transfer, enable synchronization of multiple devices on the bus, and checking on the presence and health of the various devices on the bus. Note that the health message is used to check the health of the CAN communications, whereas the bit control service checks the health of the device. For example, uh, smoke detectors. ARINC 825 added transmission scheduling to the CAN specification. This is a mechanism for guaranteeing that specific types of data are transmitted with a guaranteed frequency. The system architect will assign a certain bandwidth to each device in such a way that the total bandwidth of the system is sufficient to handle the data that needs to be transferred. Bandwidth is assigned in terms of bytes per minor frame time. Each device will determine how best to use the bandwidth assigned to it by sending time-critical data more frequently than less time-critical data. At the hardware level, Multiple contiguous bits of the same value may be difficult to read because of different sensitivities of oscillators. For example, 20 bits at 1 MHz theoretically take exactly 20 microseconds to transmit. A device with a slightly slower oscillator might take 20.5 microseconds. A receiver with a slightly faster oscillator may think that the signal is 21 microseconds long thus interpreting the signal as 21 bits. The CAN hardware therefore never allows more than five contiguous bits of the same type. It stuffs in a bit of the opposite value, which will then be removed by the receiving CAN hardware before passing the message up to the user. One of the basic issues every bus must deal with is coordinate, coordinating transmission of all the nodes on the bus. How do you make sure two devices don't try to transmit simultaneously? CAN deals with this by having every device read its own transmission. 
The hardware is arranged in such a way that if two nodes simultaneously transmit a zero, they will both read back a zero. Similarly, if they both transmit a one, they will both read back a one. However, if one transmits a zero and another transmits a one, they will both read back a zero. At this point, the device that transmitted a one stops transmitting and waits until the bus is clear before it tries again. This is why identifiers with more leading zeros have a higher priority than identifiers with fewer leading zeros. A CAN bus must be terminated with 120 ohm resistors to prevent reflections back onto the bus. Twisted shielded cables should be used and devices should be connected by splicing in the high, low, and shield signals from the bus to the device. The high and low splices should be of identical length. If you would like to see a list of our ARINC 825 products, please visit our website. If you have any questions or comments, you may find our contact information at our website www.mil-1553.com. Thank you.